He did it so well when he would drop back and, and look off defensive backs. And believe me, I know firsthand because I was one of those defensive backs that were getting moved around by the eyes of the quarterback. And Calvillo did such a good job, showed his veteran savvy there by taking his eyes down the middle and then going back to Jamel Richardson. He knew he was there and he knew his route. He was confident in that and he delivers a strike. Second and a couple. Short yardage team with Lombala back in. Rolling Lombala. And the kid's got power. And he has a first down. A couple of first downs are important here for the BC Lions to try and stop some of the momentum because at that quarter break, after the third quarter was pretty much dominated by Wally Buono's BC Lions, you started to wonder when was Anthony Calvillo going to start to heat up because he's just had such a good season so far, you knew it was inevitable. Well, maybe he is. Now, a couple of first downs can take some of that steam out of his sails, some of the wind out of his sails when you think about Calvillo's momentum. formation to the right side. That's the direction Stefan Logan runs. Up close to the 50. Near seven, Devon Claybrooks, the defensive tackle, brings him down. And the Lions, especially in this second half from Buck Pierce, have had success on first down, and that's really one of the things that have helped him so much. You get seven or eight on first down, there's sure a lot of plays to choose from. Crowd starting to get involved. They want a deep, the defense to get a stop so they can get their offense back on and see if Anthony Calvillo can keep the hot hand. Three and a half minutes into this fourth quarter. Second and three. Time again for Pierce. A crosser for G. Roy Simon. Steps across midfield and dropped at the Montreal 49. Rayshon Kaiser again, replacing the injured Randy Drew. The play tore up a knee in Toronto, excuse me, Glenn. Play decided to get G. Roy Simon from one side of the formation all the way across, but he can do it so quickly that it, it doesn't put the quarterback in, in jeopardy. It doesn't put him in trouble because he's holding the ball too long because G. Roy Simon can cross that field in the blink of an eye. Fifth catch for Simon now at 57 yards on the night. And a first down for BC. This time to the wide side. Paris Jackson, another catch. And Waldo with the sure tackle limits the damage to about seven. And Paul Waldo has that interception and a big one for him in his career. But you've got to believe that Buck Pierce and the Lions offense will now go out and see if they can test Paul Waldo on that corner. And this is what they do. The first play to possibly set up a deeper play to Paris Jackson. They know that Waldo in his Playing out of there on that corner is going to give the Lions a little bit of room. Remember, his interception was an overthrow. So they're going to try and throw it underneath to see if they can have the young guy come up and then maybe get one in behind him. But he has the makeup speed. Waldy's quick. Short yarded situation, second and three. A load up again for Lombala. And this time, had the legs cut out from under him. And Paul may have come loose. Montreal Alouette's trying to sell that. And let's find out what's at the bottom of the pile. Is this the fifth turnover of the night by the BC Lions? I believe it is. Yes, it is. The rookie cops it up. And Montreal comes up with the football, and Wally Bono wants to challenge this one. Well, they start to catch up with you, and you don't want to turn the ball over when the opposing quarterback has a hot hand, and AC had the hot hand to start this quarter. Lombala up in the middle. First contact is made right underneath by Diamond Ferry, the linebacker. He cuts the legs out and was the ball out before Lombala went down and touched his knee to the ground. You saw the ball pop out of there. But did you see his knee at the same time? That's the key. Molly Buono wants to make sure and see if he was down by contact. BC is challenging the ruling on the play. They believe their player was down by contact with the ball. I'll review it. So Clint Johnson will go under the hood. And we'll get another look at Labala.
little surprised by that formation on second and three, playing it as if it was third and one. But there's Lombala. Okay, now does the Very ball. contact and no knee. There's knee down and then the ball's out. I don't know, that's gonna be awful tough to overturn. I don't know if you have all the evidence you need from that angle. Let's take a look if we can see a better angle at the knee and when the ball comes out. Now, if his shoulder or arms hit the ground, that's also down by contact. The only thing that's not down by contact is if he puts his hand down and maintains his balance. But if any other part of his body hits the ground while he has the ball, he's down by contact. Now, there's a ball out there. You saw it just beside the leg of Diamond Ferry. Or does it come out when he hits the ground? It's one of those tough ones like as if you were trying to get the spot of the football. There's just such a massive humanity. It's, let's, I mean, let's just see it one more time, because you're, you're absolutely right. These, these are the toughest to, to rule on, because there's so many players involved. But he has control there. Now, Diamond Ferry gets him in the air, but he hasn't touched his hands on the ground. And is the ball out there? Boy, that, that's going to be tough. That's After review, the ruling on the field stands. The fumble, Montreal's ball. And, and, and I, you know, I think that the officials really had to go that way with that one because there just wasn't a lot of ev uh, evidence to overturn a call. But but Wally Buono had to challenge it. Big hit by Diamond Ferry to actually lifted that heavy rookie who is listed anywhere from 250 to 270. Almost lifted him in the air, and it took him a while to come down, and the ball came loose. Chopped down that big oak tree. And suddenly, Montreal's got the football again and really could take control of this, but Coburn has been controlled in the second half. Aaron Hunt again at the bottom of the pile. You know, those turnovers by Montreal coming into this game, the Lions had led the league with forced fumbles. They had nine coming in. The Montreal Alouettes only had three coming in, which was low in the league standings. But they've caused some fumbles tonight. They started the game by causing a fumble by Ian Smart on special teams. That turned into a touchdown. Five turnovers, and when you get five turnovers, you, you should be leading and winning. Maybe you've got more of a margin than that. Guns, and he has an open man. And that ball comes loose. Kerry Watkins the catch, but he was down. Play stopped, and it's a Montreal first down at the 46. And Anthony Calvillo starting to heat up. Nice one-on-one -on -one there. Remember, the Lions have had to make a change at the corner. Jerome Dennis out there playing for Dante Marsh. Calvillo seems to be getting into that rhythm where he takes that little hop step towards the line and runs one over the middle. At the BC 46, a first down for Montreal, and Calvillo goes up top, and Kerry Watkins couldn't bring it down. Number three in the league in receiving, had a step, but couldn't corral the ball. Wide receiver right here once again, Kerry Watkins. This time he's going to play against LeVar Glover. They are in the middle of the field, so Glover goes on to Watkins. That little juke into the inside froze LeVar Glover for a moment. Got him a little bit of room in behind. You could see about a yard and a half separation and just out of his hand, out of his reach. So second and ten. Line 46 yard line. Quick hitter, hit by Cahoon, goes down Cahoon, all the way to the BC 30. You know, this is what I was talking about, and you know, those, those who have played basketball before know how to try to deny an inbound pass. You, you play underneath the receiver, watch Cahoon come out here, we'll see how the Lions defend him. See that inside on Reggie Miles, see how he plays inside at normal, and Ben Cahoon is so quick, and to make those breaks to the outside and the underneath curls back into the middle and finding little spots on the field to sit down. You almost have to get in behind him and dare him to beat you deep because he doesn't often run the deep route. Well, he's great, great admiration for the secondary he's playing against. Talked about that yesterday. Look for one way and checked down over the middle. Richardson, another catch. 
Well, this this defensive backfield has has given up some yards to BC Lions, but they are still leading the league in in the big play categories. I mean, they 24 sacks coming into this game. That was second, 16 interceptions. That was first. Corey Banks has, has been beat a couple of times, but has two touchdowns this year. Ben said the best hands of any secondary he plays against. He reminded me that Baron Miles has led the league in interceptions. Ryan Phillips has. Corey Banks has. Bunch of ball hawks. They'll gamble. They'll cheat. And he missed out in a good way. That ball came loose. But Montreal, are they not on it? Lions, I think, have it. They play hot potato. And BC looks like they've come up with their first takeaway of the night. And it couldn't have come at a better time. Mike Benavini's fired up. 